Hey everyone, welcome along to the channel today and today we are exploring anamorphic pinhole photography. Now I've got two cameras with me, both uh, designed and 3D printed by Mir Pinholes. Uh, first up we have, this is a medium format 6x12. Now I've only used this with uh, one roll of film already. Um, I've had the 4x5 uh, camera for a little while. I've really struggled to get my head around um, what you're actually capturing. It's a weird, weird process to figure out what you're actually going to get because it's completely different to any normal camera. Uh, pinhole camera, any camera. Uh, so this is the 6x12. And the film comes in here, wraps around there, and comes and spools back onto here. I'll set that up in a bit. And there, and then you advance your film of these. Got a little thingy for your um, window so you can see the number. And then there is how we take the exposure. The little shutter. Now, to try and kind of figure out a little bit more, uh, this is my the uh, 4x5. I'm just going to show you this one. This is one of the prototypes I had. So I'll open this one up. Now, really, really simple. Um, I'll put some better up photos so you can see what's inside. It's got a little notch, a little raised bit here. So you slide your sheet of film in. So it sits around the inside. Kind of like a beer can camera. Except the difference is, with a beer can camera, you'll have your filming down here and you'll have a little pinhole here for your shutter and it will cut your point to capture your image. With the anamorphic, the shutter is on the top. Now this hat is meant to have a pinhole in it, but I've removed it to put in the other one. Uh, so that's basically where that will be. So you'll have a film sitting inside. Now, and you open it up. Now, if you want to, let's say, capture this camera and we pointed it at the camera, and took a photo, you would not capture the camera. If I wanted to capture the camera, I'd actually have to have it that way and take a picture. Because the field of view on this is basically, the film is sitting up here and down here. So we are capturing everything from kind of like here to here, up, down, and then everything from about 180 degrees that way and that. So it's a real weird distorted image. Now, if you're into weird distorted images, the chances you're into pinhole photography anyway, so with that we'll get a 6x12 stretched image. I've done a few with this already, like I've said, I'll put a few pictures up. And uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, hard to kind of get your head around what you're capturing. This is taking time. I've had some proper physical headaches <laughs> trying to figure out. But this one really has excited me. Um, because in here you can get two sheets of film so basically we're getting a 360 degree image um so if you put this on the floor somewhere you would capture everything around it a real weird distorted view now a couple of photos i've already done with this i'll show you quickly this one is hanging upside down over my kitchen sink and there's a slight gap uh, where the raised bit is so you don't get a full join um, and basically yeah you can see the weird curve of the sink and the stuff on the side the tap now I've joined three images together to kind of make it flow through a bit more uh, this one was captured in my lounge uh, it starts with me sitting on a chair. This was put on the floor, so it's looking up. You can just see that curvature of the whole room, just real bending through and the fan on the ceiling. Uh, I think that worked quite well. 
And another one was just in the bathroom. Again, you kind of, you can see the lines on the side of the bathroom just real curving round and uh, then we come to like the bathroom cabinet and the towels hanging and it's just a bizarre effect but I think done well can really, really work well and I think this particularly you know, inside a uh, church or something, an old church, you've got the pews going around, you can really be able to capture some wonderful stuff. But yes, it is just very hard to get to know that you're not pointing it at what you want, you're flat on the ground and capturing just up. Uh, they've both got um, tripod mounts, so you can mount them on the tripod. Today I'll mostly probably just be sitting on the floor because I think they work better for this sort of thing, but I'm gonna try and find a few, few locations, few different things, and uh, yeah, see what we can capture of these. Let's have a bit of fun with it. Okay, so we're just gonna quickly load this up. I've got some Foma Pound 100. Now, just as I'm loading this up, um, some ideas for photos with this thing. The designer, Andrea, uh, did some fantastic ones with cars, some old classic cars, sat right down by the bumpers and stuff, and they look absolutely amazing. Um, so I think this is something that would work really well for this. Um, unfortunately, we've got no car shows on around here at the moment. Otherwise, I'd have taken it to one of them. Um, but certainly a good idea of what you can capture of this. Because I'm normally more focused on landscapes and stuff, I kind of find it quite hard to think outside when it comes to something new. But something like this is certainly going to be a fun all-round sort of camera. And there's not a lot of people making these either. Uh, there could be a reason for that, um, that no one wants to buy them, but I think certainly there is a, a market out there. There's a few places that have and do make them. And, um, yeah, certainly worth a try. So with this, we're just feeding it around. I'll poke it through this bit here. Now he does supply a little thing you can hold your film down with while you're doing this, but unfortunately, like most things, I end up losing them. Um, right, let's just do that. And that should just be able to sit in a little recess down here, hopefully. Just trying to keep this film tight so I don't get fogging all over it. That seems pretty good. That's. Confident that's all in, hopefully. Right, let's put that on top. Oh, make sure they're they should just spin round nicely together. And let's try and find that number one. Uh two, I think we start with. Because it's 6 by 12, we'll probably go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Uh, should be about right. So the aperture on this one is f227. Um, so I've just set this shot, shot up just by the arch here. Uh, it's got about a 16 second metered, which came to about 2 minutes 30 with foam pan. So just letting that roll. Yeah, 2 minutes 30. So that should hopefully capture kind of here, here. I don't know if it'll get the whole thing in, but we'll find out, won't we?
Now I've just quickly pulled up at uh, another church. I'm gonna try the 360 degree camera. Now you don't need two sheets of film in this. You can just put one uh, for like 180 degree. Uh, this has an aperture of F250 and I've got this loaded with Fomapan 400. Now I need to say a massive, massive thank you to Elise Ryondon. <laughs> Right done. I really, really sincerely apologies. I cannot pronounce your name. Um, an amazing person on Twitter, a Twitter friend. I'll uh, link her stuff below. And uh, seriously, thank you so much for sending me this film. Uh, basically, uh, she had it uh, in a fridge. She wasn't using it. Had no intention of doing any large format photography anytime soon. So sent it along for me to use. So. Really, really grateful. Thank you so much. So I've just done a quick couple there, one with the 6x12 and one with the 4x5. Now metering with the 4x5 when it's got two sheets of filming, it's obviously going to be a little bit hit and miss because uh, different parts of the scene are going to be completely different. You're going to have your highlights and your shadows. So what I do is I meter for the highlights and the shadows and kind of find that middle ground and that seems to work quite well. Now the other thing is it's kind of a one shot camera. Um, unless you've got a film change bag with you and you faff around with that or it is you take your picture you go home dark room load it back up i have got a film change bag with me so if i come across anything else i will uh put some more in there and see what we get but yeah hopefully them ones come out well so we'll find something else now quickly Right, so I'm going to quickly try and reload this. I feel a little bit, I just literally pulled up on the side of the road. Um, feel a little bit dodgy. Kicking around my hands in a bag, I'm all up. Filming it. Um, let's give this a quick go. Now I think one of the things with this um, camera, I've basically been trying to look for some good buildings. Um, and I was going to head to uh, a couple particular ones I wanted to try and capture. The parking's a bit of a nightmare and the parking wardens are all over the place today. Um, and I didn't want to get fined just for running out and capturing one picture or paying a couple of quid just to capture a picture. So I've come down to the beach, uh, so we get down here. But no, with this, uh, this 360 degree one, I think it would be fantastic in like a city, some high rise buildings and stuff. I think it could work really, really well. But we'll see what we can find down on the beach. Right, them two sheets are out. Let's see if we can get two more in. Got some people coming by. Look at this nutter. Right, we are locked and loaded.
So advancing the film on is really easy. As long as you're moving both of them little nobbles at the same time, it's uh, really smooth, really impressive. I've just had a, uh, a weather warning on my phone actually. I think that's all this coming in. I think I've got about half an hour before it hammers it down. So I think I've got about three more to do on this. I'll try and get another 360 degree one as well. See what we can capture of that. Uh, just going to see what we can find along here. I think that's the last shot with that camera. I just grabbed another quick one of a boat and this as well. I've got about a minute exposure on this one. I'm still not sure what I'm gonna get from this. This is very much a learning experience for me, but it's enjoyable. It's a bit more exciting when you don't know what you're gonna get. But finish this one up and then we'll find one more with the four by five. It is nice having them magnets on that shutter, just snaps back in, lovely. Right, I was really struggling to find something uh, for that shot. I can feel the rain in the air now, so I'm just gonna hammer it down a little bit. Uh, so I've just dumped it in the ground there. Uh, see what we get, like I said, this is a very much a learning experience for me as well. So uh, I have no idea what I'm gonna get. I've got an idea, but not much. So we'll have a look. Right, so I am back in my car just before the rain comes. Um, I enjoyed that. Actually, it's, uh, it's been good fun. Um, thinking very, very differently with anamorphic, it's a bizarre field of view you're getting. And on the right subject, I think it can work really, really well. Uh, when I first got the camera, I was doing a few bits on the downs and it just, it just didn't really look right. It just, it's got a sub, like a, a subject which suits it. Like I say, buildings, I think in the city and stuff, I think you can have some real good fun with it. And like I say, with cars and stuff, some of the stuff Andrea has done, it, look, look, it looks amazing and it can work fantastically well. So I'm excited to see the results. Obviously you've seen them. I uh, really hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, certainly the photos. Um, if you watched my previous video, you'll know I finally got back out with a lensed camera, my Mimir RB67, and I thoroughly enjoyed it actually. It was a pain, and I was still feeling it. Um, two days later, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but I was really pleased with the photos, and I'm gonna start getting back out of that again a bit more actually. Um, and I'm quite excited to get back out of that and get more. A couple of the photos were a little bit blurry. Um, I'd forgotten all about zone focusing and depth of field and I'd, I've not had to do or worry about any of that for a long, long while. So 
I've re-educated myself and some of that to get the hang of it again so I'm looking forward to getting back out of that and certainly be plenty more pinhole photography to come as well so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that and I shall see you next time thank you very much for watching